to me, that was this stark reminder that, man, we are living in a different world, right? So we're talking about Gen X and millennials. Like, it's interesting to see what's going to happen with Gen Z. Now, as we think about digital, um, the, the digital world that we live in, how many of us here have heard about digital transformation? Quick show of hands. Is that digital transformation is our fourth industrial revolution. We're seeing this fusion of our physical world and our digital worlds are coming together. It's much more, much more profound than digitizing paper. It's not about that. What's disruptive about digital transformation is the pace at which it's innovating. It's introducing new things and new functionality. It's that pace that's disruptive. And that's what's creating friction, right? That's what's creating the problem. Let's think about our businesses here. How many of us have heard of Amazon Automotive? Quick show of hands. Okay. So Amazon Automotive is already showing signs that they're ramping up to get in the game, right? So you need to ask yourselves, what do you do if Amazon gets in the game, right? And it's only a matter of time. But I believe that there's never been a better time to take them on than now. Share experiences, share your concerns, share vulnerabilities, because you guys, yeah, you guys are competitors, but you're not enemies. So who are we talking to as, as we change our approach? What are we saying to them? So after we know what their values are, we know what their lifestyle um, traits are, what are we saying to them? How are we being relevant? And the third thing is, how do we actually engage them, right? What do we do? What are the solutions that we look to? What are the principles that we apply? <laughs> the key takeaway was that there's this alternating definition of success, okay? So for boomers, success was about stability. And then success became about wealth and this concept of the young and rich. And then success is now about pleasure, right? It's about entertainment. It's about enjoying those experiences, right? And that's the shift that we need to respond to. There are 9.3 million millennials in Canada. They are the single largest living generation today. You probably have hired a lot of millennials and are asking, well, how the hell do I manage them? One of the most exciting ones that we're seeing is mixed reality. Anyone here familiar with mixed reality? Okay, so you got a couple hands. So what mixed reality is, is basically this fusion between virtual reality and augmented reality. So if you guys remember, like all the news was covering Pokemon Go, right? People are planted in the busiest possible areas and just catching Pokemon, right? On their phone, you see this augmented object. So what mixed reality is, it's basically much more immersive where it's high definition holograms that you can, you can basically overlay onto your physical environment. Right? And there's some very, very exciting things that the auto companies are doing right now with mixed reality. Let's consider we're in a dealership right now, and you, know, you walk in, and everybody is tied up. Every salesperson's connected with somebody, and you're just kind of standing around like, you, know, you feel like kind of an idiot. You know? You're just standing around, you're waiting for someone to talk to you. Right? So what mixed reality can do is it's a head-mounted display, where basically you can have a hologram that comes over and can show you the different components of the car. It could show you the safety features with holograms on top of the physical car. It can show you the engine. It can show you the different compartments that you actually care about, right? And that's the power of holograms. And that's something that's really going to change. Within the next five years, it's going to be one of the, um, I believe, one of the most disruptive technologies uh, or effective technologies for you guys to leverage in the retail environment. There's all this talk around Facebook's dead. Stay away from Facebook. Facebook is still one of the strongest social platforms overall, right? So this is in terms of daily participation on social. Whereas you might go on, turn on the six o'clock news, they're going to Facebook, and that's that news aggregator, right? They're not really creating net new content on Facebook, but they're sharing content on Facebook. Okay? What we see, it's interesting about some of the changes, some of the headwinds we're seeing. Snapchat has eclipsed Facebook for the first time for 18 to 22 year olds. Okay? So Snapchat is growing. They're using Snapchat a lot more, but some of them have actually skipped Facebook altogether. Right? So it's really interesting 
over the next five or 10 years what this is going to look like. Travel is the number one lifestyle value for this audience. And so I was keynoting um, an OEM conference, uh, an auto OEM conference, and they make motorcycles. And somebody says, they raise up their hand, they say, well, Andrew, you can't help me. I said, why? He says, because millennials don't buy bikes. And I said to him, then get out of the bike business. I said, you're not in the business of selling bikes. You're in the business of selling adventure. You're in the business of selling unique travel opportunities and experiences. And so we need to think about that differently in terms of the copy that we produce, in terms of the images that we show. How does that align to these values, these lifestyle values? Customers demand transparency, right? So I was taking an Uber from the office to the airport, and it's taken a really long time. So I open up the app, you zoom in, he's actually in the Tim Hortons parking lot, going through the drive-through, right? And he pulls up, he's like, oh, sorry, the traffic's really bad, right? With the piping hot Tim Hortons. It's like, come on, you can't do that, right? Customers demand transparency, and so they're empowered, they're researching your dealership well before they get there, okay? So that's one of the biggest you know, changes in terms of, of the customers being empowered. They're, they're doing that research. Half of them that get to your lot, they're not going to contact you before they get there. They've done that research. The thing that we need to demonstrate is that they want real photos. We need to get rid of the stock photos. They want real photos. We live in an Instagram era where everybody wants photos. We need to give them more photos. And we need to be authentic with the language, right? So you think about the lifestyle values. And we're going to talk about connection keys. We've got to make sure that the language you're using is appropriate for the audience. This concept of turning the connection key, what do we mean by that? It means aligning your messaging to really what they care about most, to their passion point. What I find fascinating about that as a marketer is that Red Bull has just, it's full of sugar. It has nothing to do with action sports and it has nothing to do with adventure, but they do a damn good job of connecting that, right? So you think about that. We are in much better position to drive that connection to adventure and we need to do that if we want to sell the millennials. And really, it's about rethinking about what your role is in the journey, in the buying process. You're no longer a dealership. You guys are an experience center. You really need to think about that. Because the one thing that you can give that Amazon can't give is a live touch experience. And you might say to me, well, Andrew, look, but you just told me they're all about digital. When we ask them, what kind of marketing do you actually want? The number one thing on that list by far is experiential marketing, is that live touch experience. And obviously it's cost prohibitive, you can't do that with everybody, but it's about how do you take those one-to-one -one experiences and how do you amplify them to one-to-many? How do you strategically make sure that those experiences this, are, are documented, are captured with photos and how they find their ways online? I see here 160 reviews of these Goodyear tires and I can get them in two days, right? So what we need to do is bring that layer of transparency into the dealership. People still buy from people. People want to buy from people, fundamentally, right? If you're going to compete, do not compete on price because it's basically a spiral to the bottom for everybody, right? Compete on service. Service is how you're going to compete. Second thing, create shareable moments. From the time they get to your dealership, to the time they do a test drive, to the time they pick up their car, how do you make those moments special? Right? How do you make sure a picture like that ends up on their Instagram, it ends up on their Facebook? You've got to create these special moments that are shareable. And the third thing is you've got to ask for reviews. You have to ask for reviews. Reviews will not come by themselves at the rate and pace that you need. You must ask for reviews. And what you need to do is think about a way that you can make this turnkey for your sales folks and your ops folks where they've got templated messaging, a templated approach that they ask for reviews. 
Yes, you need to think about off-the-shelf solutions that you can pull. You need to think about how you need to tool that. But what I'm saying is technology has been democratized and the cost of technology has come down significantly. So with that, thank you guys so much for having me. And I'm going to be sticking around for the next couple of days so you can come find me after. <laughs>